Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Boost HD here, and today we're going to do another podcast video for ICT Info One, and this is for the AQA exam board. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at topic four, which is selection and use of input devices and input media. And so, without any further ado, let's go ahead with the video. So the very first uh, main heading of this actual topic is selecting a suitable input method, and there are four to choose from, and you need to make sure that the method is automatic, fast, cheap and accurate. Another one I'd like to add to that list is compact because you don't want to be lugging anything that's heavy around with you. You want to make sure everything is, is light and compact. And the very main bulk of this actual topic we're going to be looking at manual methods of data entry. And the very first one is a keyboard. Uh, so for example, if I want to actually type a Word document and I have a keyboard to hand, this is obviously going to be a manual method of data entry with the amount to physically type using the keyboard the information onto the Word document. Uh, so another example would be a mouse, for example. So if I uh, want to navigate around a GUI, uh, which is a graphical user interface, I can use the mouse to navigate around, which is going to be a lot easier to use than the actual keyboard. So that, again, that is a, a manual method because you want to control the mouse yourself. Another one is uh, voice and speech recognition. So, for example, Siri on an iPad or Google Now on an Android device or just your simple uh, voice recognition through your PC are all manual methods of data entry. Uh, another example would be scanning. Uh, so if I want to scan a photo uh, using a scanner and I want to upload that photo onto a computer, again, that will be a, a method of manual uh, information because I'm going to scan the document myself. Uh, producing images using a digital camera, again I'm taking the photograph so I will need to upload the, upload that photograph myself. Uh, webcams, uh, they kind of fall into the manual and automatic because they capture by themselves but you obviously have to be there to, for the webcam to capture you. So again it's kind of manual and uh, another one would be input from a digital video camera which is similar to the actual standard camera where you actually have to uh, you know take the photo yourself and upload it yourself. And there are some other input devices as well, like third-party devices such as joysticks, touchpads, uh, tracker ball, which is similar to a mouse, which mainly used by people who have disabilities. Uh, you also have uh, graphic designers who use a light pen, and you also have, you know, there's also um, sketch pads as well, which are interactive, and you know, there's obviously smart boards, interactive pens, all these are methods of input devices. So these are the, uh, the extra ones that they may ask you a question on in the exam. Uh, so input media we're going to take a look at now. Uh, so the first one is a magnetic strip reader or recognition. And you know when you go to the, the, your local supermarket, you take out your credit or debit card, uh, you need to swipe this card against the machine itself or input your PIN. And then what is going on, it reads all your data and there are very few errors made with this type of uh, you know transaction. It's all automatic. This is the very first example of an automatic system where you actually input the data which is it, the actual process itself is automatic, but the input is more manual. So you have to kind of try and take the two into consideration. But this is the, uh, it's obviously, it's very quick and there's very few errors. Another method of input is a uh, touch screen. Uh, we're getting very popular now. You can see touch screen uh, in like interactive maps, for example, in shopping centers if you want to try and navigate your way around. Uh, you also find it on. Uh, as I mentioned, satellite navigation in cars and even in some computers you'll find touchscreen. So this is a very popular method of input. Uh, another one is barcode. Again, massively popular on every single product that you buy in the supermarket. It gets scanned, its information gets read. For example, its stock, price, country of origin, ingredients, if it's a food package. All this information is, is compressed and you know encoded into this single barcode which again is a very good method of uh, data handling and data input and obviously the advantages of this is it's fast uh, it's more accurate uh, it's slow it's printing it's only you know, a series of bars and lines and however the disadvantage is that you can easily uh, input the wrong amount and it is quite expensive to maintain uh, so let's look at some handheld devices then uh, so portable handheld devices, again, which also fits into this, is scanners, as they actually read the barcode itself. And you also have handheld devices to read meters, for example, so when the gas man comes around to your home, he'll actually use his special uh, input device, and he'll, re he'll use his gas reader, and all this is uh, forms of input method and device. Uh, so if you go ahead, 
Um, you can see there is the optical mark reader. Now, this is used for if you're if it's used in uh, lottery tickets. It's used in uh, some exam papers, which are multiple choice, and it's also used in questionnaires. Basically, all the information takes a batch of all, all these documents, and it marks it automatically. So this is a massive automatic uh, method of recognition. Uh, it's very fast and it's very accurate and it's ease of use and it's also cost effective in the long run as staff will not be required to uh, sit there and actually mark the paper itself whereas this machine although it will have a high initial cost it will be very expensive in the in the uh, well, sorry cheaper in the long run which is mainly better off you also have the optical character recognition now this is very this is mainly used in banks and post offices and it basically takes the characters of uh, parcels for example it's able to uh, convert this and make this digital on a, on a computer or on their database so that's a very good method as well and it's also portable uh, and then you also have the magnetic ink character recognition now this is used on checks and this makes sure that the check is you know accurate and it makes it really impossible to try and forge a check using this uh, machine here you can tell what's a bogus check and what's a real check uh, it can easily be read by the machine and its, it's, it's speed is absolutely ridiculous it is really fast um, when it comes to reading this type of information which is also a very good thing and but however this is disadvantage of course this type of technology is going to be very expensive initially but as you always say in the long run it becomes cheaper and it becomes more cost effective so that is pretty much topic four uh, it's a very small topic. Uh, if you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to ask me. And p please feel free to leave a comment. And thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.